Did you ever notice how these three wingless Skypeans also all happen to be gods? What if I told you that Skypea actually gave us the most important insight to the biggest upcoming plot twist in One Piece? A massive, bone-shaking betrayal right around the corner. After reading Skypea multiple times in the last few months and watching the Reverie arc for the first time in the anime, I have quickly realized that there is one forgotten character with more connections to the Gordese than even the mysterious Eam. After years of assuming that we didn't know anything about the Gordese, it finally hit me. It's been in our faces the entire time. The deeper I dug, the more evidence I found that these two gods are not only connected, but they are brothers from the same celestial dragon family. So today, I will finally share with you a story that is unknown to the masses. This is the story of the banished former Elder Star, Gonfall the Sky Knight, and he is the brother of this current Gordose member. Our story begins around 40 years in the past with two royal brothers. The scene is the holy land of Mary Joa. Sage. Mary jo. Our first brother's name is Gan Fall, and we'll just call the other one John Fall for now. His brothers were known for constant arguing and bickering. These were your typical celestial dragon debates from politics to fashion, you name it. Is it really okay to start a family with your second cousin? Hmm? I'm getting tired of wearing these itchy air helmets on my head every day. But Johnny boy, if you take it off, you'll be breathing the same air as those disgusting humans. So one day, everything seems pretty ordinary. A brotherly squabble begins, or so everyone thought. Not even Katakuri himself could predict that this seemingly petty argument would result in Gonfall literally being sent to heaven. Now you might be wondering, what exactly were these brothers arguing about that was so important? Well, for starters, it might have been around the corruption of the world government and the mysterious Eam. As we know from Corazon, Homing, and Mo's guard, not every celestial dragon dragon is a detestable evil elite. And then we look at the Gorose. They have a certain level of class wearing the black suits and running the government through the shadows. So Gonfall one day spoke out against Eam and asked his brother Johnfall if he had any regrets extinguishing lights, the great cleansing, and worshipping the hidden being Eam. Brother, this is inhumane. What we're doing is living our lives making decisions based off fear. This is not the confidence that embodies a true celestial dragon. We call ourselves gods, but it is merely a selfish excuse to do as we please. Now this may be a bitter pill to swallow, but during the Ohara flashback, we actually see a glimmer, a glimpse of humanity and sympathy from only one of the five elders, and that is John Fall. <laughs> And deep down, he knows what he's doing is wrong, and so his brother's words infuriate him even more. This empathy is a rare trait of the Gorosei, and is something that Gonfall and Jonfall have tried to suppress ever since becoming Eam Sama's loyal servants. And this results in a legendary clash, two brothers turning on each other, Johnny Boy calling Gon a traitor, and Gon hits him with an even bigger blow, calling him a heartless, soulless puppet. The battle is quick as Jonfall ultimately wins, as he was always the stronger brother, more powerful in hockey, and is a natural born fighter. And so the result of this is that John Fall and Gonfall are taken to speak to the Almighty Eam. To show that there will be no further tolerance of disloyal servants, Eamu announces that John Fall will be the one to execute his own brother. So what happens next is John fix the death of his own brother, sparing his life. He could not bring himself to murder his closest friend and the only person he could trust within the Celestial Dragons. And so this was the day that John finally woke up and he realized he needed to make a change, but what could he possibly do? This is when the biggest plot to overthrow the old way the celestial dragons began. If he escaped the holy land and hid out, a future day would come, and this is the great war that is prophesized. And so as these chaotic events played out, the first chapter of our story comes to an end, with the youngest looking elder being inducted as a replacement to Gone Fall. And now we take a journey across the world into the high sky islands. Let's take a trip from the holy land of Mary Joa to the god land Skypea. The first time we've ever been introduced to the Gorosei is during the Jaya arc in chapter 233. And we first meet Gon Fall only 4 chapters later in 237. He appears fighting off Wiper, a Shandian descendant wearing a devil mech. Now this may simply be to symbolize the fact that Gon Fall is also a Kami, facing off a demon head on. But we could also apply this to a possible theory that the will of D is the will of the devil. In other words, the natural enemy of the gods. Kami no
the checkered fate and we know that Delphimingo fears them they could be some kind of boogeyman horror story where the celestial dragons are told so they can stay good as kids he introduces himself as the sky knight now initially this wouldn't mean much it's quite self-explanatory as he comes sweeping down on his bird horse and he lives in skypea but my perception of this also changed when we look at the celestial dragons because celestial also referring to heavenly and the sky but more importantly we know that celestial dragons are the most proud of their heritage when garp is escorting princess shirahoshi and king neptune to the reverie we see the celestial dragons portrayed as nice the ones who created the world we see a glimpse of celestial dragon privilege leaking out in a little mini flashback i never really saw ganfall as a villainous or antagonizing character but he is just such a complete Gonfall appears and negotiate with the Shandians, and it reminds me of how the Godasei are known for negotiating with the people like Shings and CP0 negotiating with the Roshi and Wano. In a dispute with Wiper, who is screaming in his face, telling him to give him his land back, Gonfall says he can't and he tells Wiper there is nothing he loves more than his pumpkin juice. Like, what kind of response is this? Now I understand why Wiper was so heated, because Gonfall is over here showing his true celestial dragon colors, putting something like pumpkin juice over everything else. Gonfall also knows so many things things about how he is aware of the presence of pirates and you could say this because he met Goldie Roger but he also refers to them as criminals. To me this seemed a lot more based on personal opinion or something that he's heard from other people down below. Why would he frame his own friend Roger as a criminal when he never did any criminal acts in Skypea? He then says perhaps outsiders is a better term when being asked if the straw hats were criminals from the start. So this proves his initial personal response was that all pirates are indeed criminals. Then he goes on to say those whose actions make them heroes in war may be branded as murderers by others and this once again is paralleling the skypean political conflict but more importantly it hints at the never-ending battle between the government and pirates the very nature of being a pirate is freedom and going directly against the world government the moment they hoist their jolly roger and just like e may have stolen the throne from joy boy and nil has stolen the seat of god from gonfall we also hear these lines coming straight out of gonfall's mouth when a person cannot act without guilt he is at his weakest he says to a nil the title of a god is not enough he truly plays at being god and when you put the context that gonfall is a former celestial dragon these become mind-blowing quotes and something that wizard of voice brought out to me was the fact that oda specifically highlights these exact words making an example of this statement with the celestial dragon don quixote most guard he was a celestial dragon who finally realized how weak and how pathetic he was feeling absolutely no guilt treats fishmen like trash and has people as slaves his entire perception was changed by Odo Hime and allowed him to reflect on his devilish ways. So Gonfo could be speaking from experience in his past lives with people like Charlo's roaming Mary Joel. And keep in mind that these are the five elders, the wise man quotes that sound very similar to an elder quote. I was watching a Grand Line review video on the Godase and he describes them as maturity, logic, and reason. To say that the title of God is not enough and now thinks of himself as an actual god. After all, celestial dragons are known for taking their title way too far and they can never be happy with just being worshipped or respected with godly titles. They truly want to play the role of God and they go to say an E manipulating through the shadows and the average celestial dragon never considering the humanity and seeing everyone else as less than them. And so I'm reading Skypea and I realized something. Have you ever noticed that all of the three kamis that we've seen including the one from hundreds of years ago, these kamis of Skypeans are the only Skypeans who don't have wings. Gon Fall not having wings is extremely suspicious and points me once again to believe he is not from the Sky Islands. And so in this story, Skypea is the part of Gonfall's journey where he is trying to redeem his past ways with being confronted with a very similar situation. And chapter 274 only highlights this even more. He says, are we the evil ones? Our prosperous life on Skypea is only possible because 400 years ago our ancestors took over our yard. Sound familiar? What about the celestial dragons who took over 800 years ago and now live in the holy land just like Skypea is the god land and they continue to live in prosperity? prosperity with respect only shown to them out of fear. His past continues to haunt him and so now he tries to fix a similar situation and we even see a panel that resembles old Johnny Boy grabbing his face as the buster calls activated on Ohara. <laughs> Gonfall challenges NL the Almighty and yells, Don't overrate yourself, NL. Kami is just a title for the governor of the country. This is a world of humans. There is no such thing as Kami. Are you the Lord of Evil? <laughs>
And wow, imagine that, he is saying the same exact thing about the celestial dragons while pointing it at an L. And so finally, towards the very end of Skypiea, we see all the people of Skypiea, including the Shandians, ex Gonfalt, once again become the god of the realm. And now before we get into the third and final act of our story, let's look at a little bit of food for thought here as I found some very interesting evidence that could possibly enhance this story. <laughs> First, let's talk about hockey. We know that by using observation and conquerors, people are naturally able to connect with animals. In Skypiea, there are south birds who hate humans, still they only chose to save Gonfall specifically. We also see speed feeds as fast as lightning. He helps save the Straw Hats once from Wiper and more impressively when a nail shoots lightning straight at them from the heavens. He also manages to sneak up on an impressive observation hockey user that he hyped up to be able to reach all the yard with his mantra. And it's important to remember the distinction between mantra and hockey because Mantra is a Skypean term for observation. Gunfall also says specifically that he does not have Mantra, and this would be a wild technicality because he refers to it as hockey since he's from the Blue Sea, and it's especially strange considering that he is the one that Oda uses to explain the Mantra in the most depth that we got during the entire Skypea arc. Now if he was related to a Godose member, is it possible that he inherited some kind of genetic conqueror's will? It may be very subtle, untrained, any power that might have never been tapped into fully like Luffy pre time skip. Another mind blowing connection that I've seen is someone in my comment section mentioning that a hieroglyph on the moon during a Nels cover story looked very similar to the Godose's couch. So possibly another Skypea Godose connection, you let me know in the comments. What if Roger had actually met Ganfo at God Valley? We know they were friends and that there were celestial dragons and slaves that Roger protected at the incident. Is it possible that not all the celestial dragons treat their slaves like objects? Maybe Gonfa was actually a rare member that sympathized with the slaves and did his best to make them feel safe and marry Joa. And finally, why do the Godose not age? Are they immortal? And I personally don't believe that they're immortal, but I do believe that they are some of the only elites in the One Piece world who have came across the anti-aging drugs that preserve how you look and allow you to live a little bit longer. I believe it will all come together with the secrets that Dr. Kareha hinted at at her young age. Some sort of use serum that's very expensive and very rare, only known to certain people in the world. But we'll save that for another video. Now it's time to bring it all full circle as we make a trip back to Mary Joa in time for the reverie. Remember when I told you that they faked Gonfall's death and they gave him a chance to escape until the day would come that they would execute their grand plan? Well, the time is near and we are getting close to it. What if I told you that he was currently in Mary Joa during the reverie? I know it sounds crazy, right? But the real question is why has he returned now? The truth is, it's finally nearing that time that his family will turn against the Celestial Dragons with the World War near. During the chaotic reverie events transpiring, we have the Warlord Abolishment, whatever the f*** is going on with Sabu and Vivi, but the biggest unnoticed reveal is this. Oh, hi. Wait a minute. Who the f is this? That's right, this is Gonfall, in disguise, finally making his return to the homeland. And just like Shanks requested a meeting, Gonfall has also requested a meeting with his brother John Fall. So they are secretly meeting sometime during the reverie. The biggest betrayal in One Piece is actually John Fall turning on the elders and Emu in the final saga. And just look at this disguise, he's dressed up as Santa Claus. And what if I told you that there was another undercover member at Mary Joa? And surprisingly, he resembles another Godase member. The youngest looking one is the blonde one, and we are yet to see these two figures' faces with their eyes being hidden. Another accomplice in the eventual downfall of Mary Joa and Eam. I know this sounds ridiculous, but the Godose are the most wise, most informed people in the world. Surely they serve Eam, but they still have minds of their own. So let's make sure to keep an eye on this bearded man in black very closely from here on out. Wizard of Wars and I will be collaborating on an upcoming video even bigger and more mind blowing than this. So subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell because we will soon be exploring the mystery of NL and his true heritage, the secrets of his untold backstory, and the mysteries of the moon. So we figured out that Gone Falls is John Fall's brother, but there are so many more One Piece mysteries to solve. I can't do it without you, and this knowledge alone is only one piece of the puzzle. So let's continue to put the puzzle pieces together by clicking on one of these two videos.